Today, we're gonna take a quick look at a brand new Retro Boot build for the PlayStation Classic. Retro Boot's a RetroArch build, so we have tons of Retro Classic games for many systems. This pretty much takes the place of having like every single Retro Classic mini edition, the Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, NES, Neo Geo, the list goes on and on, even stuff that we don't even have Classic Editions yet for, and I find this a pretty awesome build. So this is from Magnus RC. It's his Retro Boot version 2 build. It would also be listed as like uh, the YB build or Yannick build, uh, Retro Boot version 2. But I did do something a little different with this. So this is his new build, not really touched or anything. But he's also done a lot of awesome stuff with pl just regular PlayStation Classic Auto Bleam builds. So with the most recent Auto Bleam being released, Beta 3, I took his previous build, the... Uh, auto bleam beta 2 version 2 build that he did that has a ton of games i have 300 playstation classic games on here so i took his build uh from auto bleam and then his his retro boot build combined the two updated it to auto bleam beta 3 and that's what i have here today so we're going to be talking about this looking at this a little bit um and i also have a new discord set up Yes, that's why I'm doing this video, essentially, is we've got a Discord where a lot of the talk is PlayStation Classic builds and, and help and all that good stuff. It's been a long time coming, but I finally jumped into it, so we do have a Discord server going. Link will be in the description, but before you jump over there, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have on here. So I'm going to go into Auto Bleam first. This is a 256 gigabyte uh, Samsung Fit usb drive mind you very low profile i have the otg support added to my system so i have it loaded through the back instead of the uh, player 2 port and instead of using like a usb hub everything's just neatly in the back of the system making this sleek and just awesome in my opinion i'll have a link in the description for that usb drive it is on sale uh, it goes on sale occasionally it's about 40 bucks right now and I have had no issues with it. I was previously using the 128 gigabyte version just because I loved it so much. Uh, but with combining these two builds, both of the builds are 128 gigabytes. Uh, not exactly, like they're around 95 or so. Uh, so combined, if you do it that way, you do need a 256 gigabyte thumb drive. And for me, this is near perfection. Uh, I know there's the retromended RPG build and my previous version that I had set up for myself I had a lot of that stuff swapped on over to this, which is something I'm still gonna do because there's a lot of role-playing games that I wanna add to this build, even though it does have a ton of them. Like I need to get Breath of Fire 4 on here, that kind of thing. So on my previous video, you probably saw that on there, but I kind of scrapped the whole thing through the, the original build. And now I'm gonna go back and customize it a little bit. But just wanted to kind of scroll through this real quick. I'm not gonna touch on all the features because we've already did that. If you wanna take a look at uh, Beta 3, with what we could do with adding favorites, uh, doing all that kind of cool stuff. Take a look at my previous video. Link will be in the description for all my PlayStation Classic stuff. But I just wanted to kind of scroll through this real quick. We have, uh, there's the 20 in, uh, installed internal games, mind you. 280 games on the USB drive. Uh, I don't have any favorites at the moment. And then all of them, 300 games. We have 300 games on this thing. 300 PlayStation games plus nearly 8,000 retro games as well. So let me just scan through this real quick, give you an idea what was on his original build, which I did do a video on previously that I think, you know, kind of showcases quite a bit. But now that we have these new features and just cool stuff going on, I'm extremely happy with this. I actually have another PlayStation Classic video coming up uh, in the next day or so that I think is going to be pretty awesome. Actually, a couple of them. And it doesn't have to do with builds. It has to do with other things, uh, making the system a portable, uh, a couple different ways. Portable with a little screen, uh, a portable with a 120 inch screen. Yeah, portable. I mean, it's kind of not portable, but it is portable because you don't have to have it plugged into the wall or into a TV. So stay tuned for that because I think those are gonna be pretty cool little projects. I've already filmed one of them. Uh, it's going to be really neat. little portable projector action for our PlayStation Classic. Yes, that's what one of the videos is going to be, and I thought it was pretty cool, so uh, stay tuned for that. But here's here's this build. 
uh, let's go ahead and get out of this after we get to the end. Just wanted to show the games that were included. That way, you know what's up. A lot of cool stuff. A lot of awesome uh, imports and U.S. release things. I'm very happy with this build. But like I said, the cool thing with with these these pre-built uh, builds is you can customize them very easily. Instead of like the True Blue Minis where it's a pain in the ass to even access it because they locked it. This you could just go through and, you know, change things out if you want. Back things up very easily. So that's why I always recommend uh, going through and doing stuff like this. And it's just so damn easy. You could buy a USB drive for next to nothing. I mean, it's not really next to nothing. They're not handing them out for free or anything. Tomba, some of my favorites. Um, but you can get, you know, USB drives, 128 gigabyte, 256 gigabyte for a reasonable price. A lot of people are using, uh, you know, external hard drives as well. For me, it's a little overkill. That's why I haven't really touched on that because I don't need more than a couple hundred games. I mean, I don't need that, to be honest. I'm not going to play every single one of these. I just want to have a nice little selection. So there we go. All the WWF, the X-Men stuffs, Xenogears, and then back to the beginning. So we can easily exit out. Let's take a look at RetroArch a retro boot build that has just a ton of awesome stuff. So I kind of briefly showed this the other day. Um, so this is going to be an upgrade, an update from his version one retro boot build that just has a lot more cool stuff going on here. We have the icons for each of the systems, the box art, the screenshots, cartridge art, all sorts of cool stuff. I found this to be really freaking neat. So let's take a look at what we got, jump into a few games Give you guys an idea of what you're getting yourself into. So here we go. Atari 2600. Uh, you know, I'm not really going to jump into any of these. But you guys know 2600. Uh, then we have Atari 7800. Tons of awesome stuff here. Basket Brawl. Basketball, what? Uh, Atari Lynx. Let's jump into one Atari Lynx. You got that uh, Alien vs. Predator prototype there. Tons of awesome stuff. Oh, man. I love the, uh, I love Chip's Challenge on the, the Atari Lynx, used to have that. Eye of the Beholder prototype, can't really play that. It's almost like, it's just a demo almost, like it's not a full game. Hard driving, uh, what else do we got here? I wanted to jump into something real quick. Uh, you know what, Pac-Land, where's Pac-Land? There we go. Pac-Land was a game that I had for the system as well, and I, I just, I really loved it. I first played it on the Turbo Graphics at like a friend's house, but here we go, awesome looking bezels. It's just looking crisp, like this really, um, oops, can like take the place of every single mini classic edition system out there, plus ones that don't even exist, all on the PlayStation Classic. $20 for this system. I just ordered five of them from Best Buy for gifts and some giveaways. I'm going to get them all set up and do a few things with it. I mean, it was like... Man, and I had some reward certificates, so I actually got them for close to uh, $15 each. So it was like, I couldn't pass on that. Got a couple gifts ready for, you know, some some Christmas action for a couple people. Uh, and then do a couple giveaways as well. It's, it's like, damn, I spent less on five of them than I did on the one that I got for myself when it came out. So let's exit that. Really cool having all that on here. We got Wonder Swan Color. And then Wonder Swan. These are all Japanese games. I've never really got into uh, emulating them or playing them just because most of them have a lot of dialogue going on. I know there's some games that don't. Uh, then we do have ColecoVision. Really awesome to see this here. Let's just jump into something. I've never really played ColecoVision, uh, but we got it. Let's see. Boulder Dash. Let's take a look at how that, that runs. And we do have a bezel for that as well. Let's see. I don't know what my buttons are here. So who knows? There we go. Got something going. But if you're a, Coleco, a ColecoVision fan, oh man, I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, here I am. If you're a ColecoVision fan, you're covered on this build. <laughs> what am I supposed to do in this game? Oh, snap. Just got killed. All right, we're getting out of that one. Screw that game. <laughs> but it's cool to see that there. Uh, FBA Alpha Arcade Games, this is actually going to be Neo Geo, so hey, this does a better job of playing Neo Geo than the Neo Geo Mini, that is for sure. Uh, what do we got there? Bang Bead, Baseball Stars, let's jump into uh, Blazing Star, take a look at that real quick. Really an awesome selection of games. Sometimes it does seem like overkill when you have thousands of games, because where are you really going to begin? 
But then at the same time, I understand some people just, uh, they, they want to have the access because they never know what the hell it is they want to play. So you also wind up discovering stuff that you never heard of, or you see somebody talking about, and they say, hey, this is a hidden gem or something like that. You know, whatever the hell a hidden gem is, but you, you know, you discover games. So it is kind of cool having a ton of stuff, but I mean, yeah, in reality, who's going to play all this? I mean, but it's nice to have a, have the option, right? So this is, uh, this is playing beautifully. There's no issues with any of these games. That's the, that's the cool thing. And the, uh, the games, the systems that you would think would have issues or they do have issues for certain games. Uh, those have been tested like Nintendo 64, uh, Dreamcast, stuff like that. So those games all run, but there we go. A little Neo Geo action. This is a really good game here. Boom. Let's get out of there. We got to keep it moving. Check out a few more games. Mame. So all of our arcade stuff. Bad dudes. Let's just run it. Bad dudes. Love this game. I know it's a little sluggish, but it's still a cool game. There we go. Bad dudes versus Dragon Ninja. Right, let's just get through that. What's my uh, buttons? Okay. Boom. Really awesome. I mean, if you don't like the bezels, you can turn them off in the options. Uh, you know, there'll be help for stuff like that on my Discord if you're really looking for it. But it's if you're accustomed to it on, uh, like, RetroPie, uh, turning on and off bezels, it's it's the same thing here. We're using RetroArch, uh, so it's not going to be too much of an issue for you. But there we go. Bad yeah. dudes. I really actually want to play that right now, but you know what? We're just kind of checking out some games. PC Engine Turbo Graphics. Bonk's Big Ass Adventure, Bonk's Adventure, Bonk's Revenge. Let's go into that. Let's go into Bonk uh, 3. Cool little, uh, what's this? Uh, yeah, Bonk 3. Cool little bezel for this one. Um, there's shaders and all that stuff if you really want to turn that stuff on. It's the same thing as RetroPie. If you're custom to RetroPie, boom, you're good to go. Look at how sharp and crisp this looks. I think this is awesome. Uh. Man, look at that big ass sprite back in the day playing these games, man. I, I kind of wish I I kind of wish I had more exposure to the turbo graphics back when I was a, a youngster. But hey, you know, the little bit that I did get the play of it did have a lasting impression on me, but it was still something, you know, it was like NES was what I had and barely knew anybody who had uh, any other systems other than like Master System. I knew a couple people, a few people actually. Turbo Graphics, I only knew like one or two, and they only had a handful of games. Let's go ahead and get out of that, though. Keep it moving. PC Engine Turbo Graphics CD, uh, really awesome to see these. I'm not going to load one of these up just because it take a little while, uh, but they do run. They run well. Uh, Super Graphics, the five games for Super Graphics. Let's go ahead and take a look at one of them real quick. There we go. I suck at this game, but man, does this not look good? It's probably, probably the best port of the game out there. If not, you know, if not the best, one of the best for sure. But there we go. Cool bezel, everything looking legit. Game Boy Advance. Let's jump into something small real quick. Bubble Bobble, why not? Let's take a look. You got all the Pokemon, Super Mario Bros. Ah, Nintendo Classics bezel. That works for me. That works. It would have been nice to have a Game Boy Advance bezel, but you know what? Beggars can't be choosers. ASMR. Good luck. <laughs> classic Bubble Bobble. There's a lot of classic re-releases for the Game Boy Advance. A lot of new features, stuff like that, but really cool. Really cool to see this. Game Boy Color. Like, man, there's so much crap on the Game Boy systems, but so much good stuff at the same time. Azure Dreams. Let me just boot it up. I'm not going to play it. I know Azure Dreams. I think that's like a roguelike uh, game. See, that's got a cool little Game Boy Color bezel. I think that's neat. Let's just take a look. Looking really awesome. I think this was like... I played the, the one on the PlayStation. I don't think I ever played this one. Um, but you would like collect monsters or something, you know, like everything had like you had to collect monsters Give me a break, right? So whatever we see the, the it runs. I just wanted to see what it looked like uh, original Game Boy 
Uh, let's jump into Adventure Island. I want to see how this looks. What does the bezel look like? Like a Game Boy. Nice. Look at that sharp sharpness. So you can you can go in and, and do like colors and all that stuff if you want on this. Like I said, it's all the same like as if you're using RetroPie. If you're accustomed to RetroPie messing with settings in RetroArch, it's going to be the same thing. Cool. Uh, Nintendo 64. We've looked at all these games in the past, uh, but they're they're really cool. Nintendo DS. I already did a video completely on there. What do we got in here? We got tons of games on here. None of the Dragon Quests, though. I'm going to have to fix that. Come on now. The Final Fantasies. Pretty cool. Uh, NES Famicom. It's a lot of cool stuff there. Oh, there's uh, there's one of my favorites. Vice Project Doom. Love that. Man, it's like midnight and I'm sweating my ass off. Still freaking hot today. Very humid here in the, the deserts of Southern California. Oh, we don't have a bezel for NES? That's a shame. I mean, we could fix that. I'm sure there's a bezel on here. It might not just, it might just not be set, but that's okay. Some people are a fan of bezels, some people aren't. To me, it's kind of like, it depends, you know? Sometimes I'm cool with it, but this is a really awesome game. I've, I've spoken a ton about this. This is definitely one of those hidden gems. The game is not just driving and shooting. There's like some Ninja Gaiden action going on, some first person uh, shooting type level stuff. But there's a lot of variety to this game. It's ridiculous. Very ridiculous. Pokemon Mini. Let's just see what that looks like. Is there a bezel for Pokemon Mini? Very interesting to see this stuff emulated. Nah, no bezel for this, but hey, if you want to enjoy these weird ass games and that shit really, wow, the way it, it emulates how everything looks, it really looks like it's on that little screen, them big chunky ass pixels. That is, that's cool. If you're into that, why not? I used to have one of those Pokemon minis. I sold it. I got rid of it a long time ago. What do we got? Super Nintendo, Super Famicom. So we're going to have a, a bunch of stuff here. Just randomly pick a game. Take a look. Got a cool bezel there. I think this is a, one of those ex kind of, not crazy expensive, but it's up there expensive games, I think, on the Super Nintendo if you have the cartridge. I have a cartridge that's not like in the best of shape of this game, but I, I think this is one of them, if I recall, that's kind of kind of getting hefty in price. Virtual Boy. I don't want to mess with that, but we got Virtual Boy. We tested that before. Uh, 32X, a lot of cool stuff. This video is going on for a while, but you know what? We're going to wrap it up in a second here. Dreamcast, we've tested like pretty much a good part of these games in the previous videos. Uh, they all run very well, so that's that's cool. Uh, Sega Game Gear, all the Game Gear games, such a classic system. Uh, Sega Master System, Mark III. So you got tons of stuff here. Let's take a look at Aladdin real quick. See what to do there. Yeah, I'm sure this isn't the best port of uh, Aladdin, but hey... If you had the Sega Master System, this might have been your only option. It actually looks really good. It's like the, I mean, they're like the Sega Game Gear games. If this was on the Master System, and it was on the Sega Game Gear, it's the same damn game. So if this, I'm pretty sure this was released on the Game Gear. I'm pretty sure that's how I played it. But yeah, that's actually, this game actually looks pretty good for a Master System game. The animations are pretty good. The backgrounds, the way they're scrolling and everything. That's a pretty neat game. Let's get out of there, though. Screw it. Sega Genesis Mega Drive. Don't know why they only called it Sega Genesis in the U.S. They should have just called it the Mega Drive in the U.S. as well. Uh, then what else do we got? Sega CD. Tons of cool stuff. SG-1000. Some early Sega Genesis action going on there. Neo Geo Pocket Color. Really cool. Uh, Neo Geo Pocket Standard. And then we do also have uh, some PSP here, which is really awesome. Uh, and then some PlayStation games listed as well. So there you go. Just wanted to kind of showcase this build. I think this video took a little too long, but you know what? When we're having fun, but it, right? Just wanted to showcase this, give you guys an idea of what's going down with this uh, Magnus RC Retro Boot version two build. That's what it should be called. Uh, if you want to find out more, come to my Discord, chat it up. There's a lot of people there talking. We just got this thing started today. Uh, so if you're looking for help on the PlayStation Classic, you're looking you know, with specific things with builds, just join us over there. Got you covered. So really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. With that said, I will catch you guys next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom.
Thumbs up. Bye.